everybody. I'm Sylvia Hepler, owner and president of Launching Lives LLC, which is a career development specialty company specifically for managers and executives based in Mechanicsburg, Pennsylvania. And I am serving clients all across the United States at this point. I'm very proud of that. Welcome back to video number two in our mini series that is related to the blueprint that I've created for landing your next job, whether that's climbing the ladder and getting that next promotion or actually leaving your current field or industry, jumping ship and finding a whole new career in a whole other industry. It really doesn't matter. But my blueprint will relate to one of those two scenarios. So I'm really happy to have you back. In the very first one, we talked about the critical step of getting to know who you are at the core. Who is the essence of you? And I ran you through like at least 10 different aspects of you as a human being that you needed to connect with so that you can get the clarity, a deeper clarity, a more comprehensive clarity about who you really are at this point in your life. And I think I had told you in that first video that we're not going to be looking at all 12 steps in this blueprint. We only have five videos. So what I did was I selected five of the steps to give you a deeper look, to immerse you at a deeper level, to help you to get better and different results in your job search. What we're going to do today in video number two is we are going to look at the step that is called recognize your beliefs and assumptions. And I'm here today to tell you, if you don't already know this, that whatever you believe and whatever you assume about anything in your life, about other people, about your job, about situations and circumstances and results you get or don't get, all of that stems back to what you believe and what you assume. Your results are determined by your beliefs and your assumptions. The actions you take in this life are determined by your beliefs and assumptions. In fact, I can't think of a single thing, really honestly, I can't think of a single thing that you could do or choose not to do that isn't based upon some belief that you have or some assumption that you hold. Now, beliefs and assumptions can be like historical. By that I mean they might go back decades, depending on how old you are. They may go back years and years or at least a couple of years. Or they may be newly acquired. Let's define what these terms are because they're really not the same thing. Beliefs and assumptions are not synonyms. There's a nuance of difference. Beliefs are your convictions. They are your views. They are your persuasions about all kinds of things and people. And your assumptions are the conclusions that you draw about everything in the world based upon the beliefs that you hold and your perceptions and your experiences. It's really that combination of all three. Assumptions are a combination of the beliefs you hold, your perceptions, and your experiences, past and current. So beliefs and assumptions about what? If they create your reality, we need to dig a little deeper into some categories that will help you to dissect this a little bit and give you the clarity that you need about each one of these categories. You know, you have to get clear about all of this, folks, before you even decide to polish a resume and go out on interviews. Because if you're not clear about your beliefs and assumptions, you're going to fall into the same traps. You're going to recreate history. You're going to take a job that looks good on the surface, but you get there and it's not at all what you expected or wanted. It's not something that's going to feed your soul. And that's the kind of thing that we want to avoid 
in this blueprint. That's one of the biggest reasons I created the blueprint. So what beliefs do you have about your age? Let's start with beliefs. Let's run through those first. What beliefs do you have about how old you are right now? And this is a problem area. Recently at a networking event, I met a woman who was probably a little younger than I. I would say that she might be about 50. And she was lamenting the fact to me in conversation that she just knows she isn't going to get any next job, not the perfect next job, but any next job, because she was too old. And I'm thinking, whoa, whoa, that's a showstopper there. She already had herself in the nursing home, practically, in terms of what she thought employers were looking for and how potential employers would view her. And this woman probably couldn't have been older than 50. And because I'm a bit older than that, I thought, wow, this woman has a lot to learn. And what a little box she has painted herself into. But she stood there, and I bet three times in that 10-minute conversation, she said, I just know I'm not going to get another job. I have to make my current job work. I don't like my current job, but I have to make it work out. And I heard the desperation in her voice because she honestly believed that she could not get another job at the age of 50. Now, the flip side of that is true as well with young people. I have talked to people in their 20s who say, well, I'm never going to get XYZ job. I'm sure they're only looking for somebody who's at least 35. So that's kind of the flip of that coin that I heard from the woman at the networking event. What is it that you believe about your intelligence? I'm talking about your natural cerebral IQ. What do you believe about that, good or bad? Do you believe that you are adequately cerebrally intelligent enough to do just about any job that you would choose to do? Or do you have these secret hopes of doing a certain kind of job, but deep down you believe that you couldn't possibly do that job? Not really, because it takes somebody far more intelligent than you are. And I say to that, according to whom? You know, who's making that judgment? Who's making that assessment? Well, you are, because that is a deeply belief that you hold. It is a belief that you are carrying around with you almost like a big bag on your back. But it's not as fun as a Santa Claus pack. You know, it's a burden. It's really a burden that you're carrying around on your back or on your shoulder to keep telling yourself day after day, overtly or covertly, that you just aren't smart enough to do X, Y, or Z. And by the way, I hear that from clients all the time. They'll say, Sylvia, you know, I'm in this job because I know I can do it. And I know you're encouraging me to go over here and do X, but I can't really picture myself doing that because I'm not sure I have the smarts for that. Don't you have to be more brilliant to do that? That's just a message. That's an internal message that you're feeding yourself when you do those kinds of things. What are the beliefs that you hold about your abilities? your natural and your acquired or learned abilities. What do you believe about those? Do you believe that you have the abilities to do your current job effectively? Do you believe you have enough of natural and learned abilities to jump ship and go over here and do something that maybe you're going to love? What do you believe about that? Or do you believe that you have been short shrifted in the abilities department. It's whatever you believe will be true. I want you to understand that. If you don't understand anything else in this video, folks, I want you to know, know without a shadow of a doubt, that whatever you believe is going to create your reality. It will be so in your world because you will make it be so. What about your education? I hear people say all the time, I'm only a high school graduate, or I have a BS degree or a BA degree. I have that undergraduate degree and that's okay, but I probably should have a master's or maybe I need to have a PhD. Look at him over here, he has a PhD. I can't really do X, Y, or Z unless I get a PhD. Well, 
to what extent do you want a PhD? I mean, is a PhD going to feed your soul or do you just think it's something you have to get so that you can land on some prestigious job through the eyes of other people, you see? Make sure that your education is right for you, is right for the work that you want to do. Now, certainly, if you want to be a psychologist, you need to at least have a master's and probably a doctorate. I'm not going to kid you about that. You know, you're not going to be a psychologist with just an undergraduate degree or a high school degree. It's impossible. So we have to be realistic about this. But don't sell yourself short in terms of the education you have. Most people do not leverage the education that they have. And the key word is really leverage. They are not taking the educational level that they have to the next level of implementation in the world. You know, most of us are underserving people with what we got. And we'll use education as an excuse. Well, I never did this because I'm just an undergraduate. I can't possibly shoot for that job over there that I'd love to get because I just have a BA degree. Those are excuses, folks. That's all they are. I don't want to be unkind about it. I really want to be gentle about it. But my promise to you, my commitment to you is always to be candid. And the candid truth is, those are just internal messages that you're feeding yourself. You're making it up. You can make something else up. How about your work history and your beliefs about your whole career trajectory? What do you believe about your work history? That it's been positive? that it has served the community, that it has served a company, that it has served the world, that it has served you and brought you some happiness and fulfillment? Or are you embarrassed by your work history? Are you ashamed of it or pieces of it? You know, and we all got something somewhere in our work history that we're not exactly proud of. You know, the only time that I really had a significant blip in my work history was I took something that I probably should have never taken in the first place I lasted about three months. This was when I was in my middle 30s. I lasted three months. I was not fired, but I chose to leave because I knew that it was such a mismatch that I couldn't stand it one more day. And so I actually left without another job. You know, all the experts will say, don't ever do that. Don't ever leave without another job. Well, I never did it again in my career, but I did it that time. That's how much I hated that line of work. And I didn't like the people I worked for either. I lost respect for them very quickly in the first several days, and I felt that I just couldn't stay there. So what do you believe about your work history? That it has established a platform for you to build upon? And in my case, I do believe that for the most part, and I'm happy about that. What do you believe about your whole career? That one thing has kind of led to the next and the next and the next in a very natural sequence? Or did you kind of have to work to get to the next thing? And then the next thing. And is it disjointed? You know, only you can answer that. What do you believe about your employers, your current employers and your past employers? What do you believe about them? That they're good people, that they're bad people, that they're not sincere, that they are sincere, that they're a bunch of bandits, that they have your best interest at heart? You know, wh what do you believe about these people? And what do you believe about the ones that you've said goodbye to years ago? Because all of that can be a bunch of baggage too. You know, maybe it's time to just release previous employers. And maybe you're getting ready to release the current one as well. But you can do that releasing so that you don't have to walk around with all of that incredible negative baggage that wears you down. And what do you believe about money? Do you believe money is a monster? that it's a necessary evil for us to live in the world? Do you believe that only bad people have a lot of money? Or that if you acquire a lot of money, suddenly you go from being a good person to a bad person? Or a selfish person or a greedy person? I mean, a lot of us carry a lot of stuff on our backs about money as well. So what do you believe about it? Let me tell you this. If you believe that money is basically bad and that only greedy, selfish people have a lot of money, don't ever expect to have a lot of money because you will kind of self-sabotage every year of your life in a way so that you never really have a lot of it because secretly you hold the belief that it's bad to have a lot of money. 
Well, let me tell you, it's not necessarily good to be scrounging every day of your life to pay your bills. And you will never be all of who you can be in this world when you are constantly scrounging. See how that lands with you. You may need to think through that a little bit. And finally, what do you believe about the economy? That it's never going to recover? That it's slowly recovering now here in 2013? That the economy is in sludge mode and there's no place for you to move? Do you believe that nobody's hiring right now? That you can't possibly get another job so you better hold on to the one you got for dear life? because there's no other opportunity circulating around out there? What do you believe? Well, I believe the economy is in the process of healing and that we as a country will in fact get to the next best place. And when you hold that belief, you're gonna be at a very, very different place in your career. You will be approaching your career trajectory from a place of true hope rather than devastation, frustration, and a feeling like nothing good can ever happen for you. Just really quickly, I would invite you to get in touch with the assumptions that you make based upon these beliefs. For example, if you think you're too young to land a management position, then you will assume quite naturally that that's impossible to have happen, that no one will ever hire you for a manage, management position at age 30, for example, because my goodness, you're too young for that. Or jumping down to education. If you hold the belief that you don't have enough formal education and enough fancy certificates to show people, then you will make the assumption that you can't possibly get job X, Y, or Z. Can't possibly happen. That's your assumption. And if you believe that the economy will never really heal itself, then your assumption is that there are no jobs available out there, and therefore you will have to stay where you are. Do you see how beliefs feed the assumptions? Because they really do. That's why you've got to get in touch with what your deep-held beliefs are first. And then take a look at what assumptions are you making and have been making as a result of the beliefs that you hold. So with that said, remember I told you at the end of the first video that I'm always going to give you an assignment. A little assignment, but nonetheless a meaningful assignment. So here's assignment number two at the conclusion of video number two. I would like you to list your personal beliefs and assumptions. So get out the good old sheet of paper, draw the line down the middle. You know how to do this. On the left side, at the top of the left column, you're going to write the word beliefs. On the right side, at the top of that column, you're going to write the word assumptions. Start with your list of beliefs about all of the things that I have given you here, all these different categories. And you know what? These aren't all the categories I could have given you, but in the interest of time, we just did these. There's probably twice as many categories that you could think of. So please don't limit yourself to the ones I have here up on the whiteboard. If you can think of other categories, please get into contact with your beliefs. Make the connection with your beliefs about all of those additional categories as well. These are just to get you started. And then after you've come up with your beliefs, make a list of your assumptions that are based on every one of those beliefs. So the point is, you're going to have at least one assumption to correspond with each belief. So that concludes video number two, and I will look forward to being back here with you next week for video number three.